All right, so again, we're going to talk about strings, understand what they are more in depth, look at the libraries that we can use for it, um, and we'll see how simple the libraries are. And then after that, uh, we're going to talk about some uh, programming tips on how to do menu driven user interfaces, okay? Um, as you have done in your uh, A2MS2 with the prototype that you have written not implemented yet. So we're gonna, I'm gonna write my own version of it so you'll see and probably if you haven't done it, then you can do the exact same thing. You have, yeah. Anyways, we'll come to it. So, going back to, going back to strings, going back to strings, let's see if it's gonna work. Uh, going back to strings, uh, we mentioned that strings are essentially null terminated array of characters, which means somewhere in memory you have an array of characters, each cell is a single character, so essentially when you create an array, um, what happens is that that array of yours will occupy a specific region of memory. Now, in that piece, you are writing certain, you are adding certain characters to hold as a statement, a name, or whatever. When you are doing something like that, we mentioned because C language is not capable to know, uh, it's, it's not capable to actually keep track of uh, at the length of an array, it's impossible for it to know where it ends. So if I create something like this character, str, let's say, 10, it means I'm going to, and, and I think that I'm going to have a string that can up to, have up to 10 characters, it's impossible for me to know actually how many characters are there. So if I actually have a char characters in here, let's say A, B, and C, so essentially, if I <coughs> write something like this, str, zero is A, and str1 is B, and str2 is C. And I assume that I have a string ABC over there. It's impossible for C to know that only the first three characters of this array is used. Literally impossible. It can't know. Because of that, we have to come up with a rule ourselves, some kind of a standard to follow ourselves. And through that standard, uh, we do whatever we want to do. Therefore, we came up to that point to saying we can always end the data with something that is not a valid ASCII code. Because we know that when I say str 0 capital A, it's actually the number 65 in there. When I say B, it's number 66, and the other one is 67. The only character, uh, the only code that doesn't correspond to a, to a, uh, to a character is zero, absolute zero, no. Because of that, to end the data, I have to actually write over here S, uh, SDR3 and put over there the integer zero, not the character zero. The character zero is some number. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's some number. I want the zero, which, which actually in... Uh, uh, I do it like this, so whenever I want to actually... Uh, Meant, uh, set up where now is, I do something like this. Not that thick, but hey, something like that. So, I don't know why that happened, but let me just see if I can go back. I meant this one. Look. That's better. I do like that. No. Okay? It means, yeah. <laughs> 
Because whenever I put zero in there, somebody thinks that I'm putting character zero in there. So this ground thingy that I put over there, you can mention it in many different ways. You can mention it as zero, just zero, if that's zero. Or you can put single quote, backslash, zero, single quote. These two are the same. No reference, so this is actually zero, number zero. Okay, so if you put <coughs> single quote backslash zero, you know what does it mean? I'll tell you what does it mean. I can, instead of writing A, I can write No, I'm not going to do that. Instead of A, I can write, I can write, say, uh, 65. Okay? So when I write 65, it literally means A. Okay? But sometimes, you want to tell to the compiler what I have as a character, and you want to put the ASCII code in it. Say I want to put the the ASCII 8. If I want to do that, I have to put a backslash over here and put 8. It means I want the character that corresponds to the ASCII code of 8, not 8 itself. So when you put backslash 0, you're essentially saying, I want the character whose ASCII code is 0. It's like having a sandwich like this. You're saying, I want the, character, I want the code of the character whose code is 0. Confused the heck out of you, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. So essentially, you are saying by putting backslash inside single quotes, you are saying, I want the character whose code is this number. The number is zero, the code is zero, so you can just put zero. Okay, so these two are the same. And this is the exact same thing as no. So you can put any of these three. You can put zero, you can put single quote backslash zero single quote or you can put M-U-L-L-L capital okay these are all the same they are all zero okay and that's how we that's why we say a null terminated array of characters so essentially we are um, yeah um, are we okay with this? alright so this is what we have done and that's what we call a string a string is essentially when the data that you are putting in there is <coughs> the data that you are putting in there is uh, uh, marked by end of it as a null okay and they actually put that one built into the language which means in the language instead of instead of actually writing this instead of writing this instead of writing these three lines you can write so double quote a b c double quote literally means st0 is a st1 is b st2 is 3 and the next one is 0 and the rest of it will be zero. If it's ten, I put three of them, you know that when I initialize, the rest are going to go zero. Are we okay with this? Do we understand this? Yes? So if you have, if you have, the, um, if you have a string, let's say it's uh, ten, mm -hmm. right? And you wanted to print that, would it only print one? Yes. To get the character zero, you have to capture that zero, right? Yeah, that's one character. So wouldn't that complicate the... Yeah, if you print a single character, but if you put it in a loop and keep going until you hit null, then it's going to print everything. So let's write a program that prints a char prints a string. If I want to write a program that prints a string, so if I want to actually uh, write a program that prints a string, I'm going to write it like this. Let's write, let's write a function. So I'm going to call it prn. So I'm going to say void prn str print a string. To that one, I'm going to print. First of all, it's a it's an array, so I'm going to send an array. I don't want to change it. I'm going to make it a constant. So constant, character, pointer, array. Right? Or if it makes you happy. Potatoes, potatoes. It's, it means exactly the same. All right? Now what I need to do, I need to keep printing until I hit the null. So I'm going to say integer i. Then I'm going to say for i set to 0, i less than... I'm not going to put anything like that. 
LA I not being equal to zero I plus plus put car LAI so this what does it do now I can actually say over here PRN SDR and I'll put SDR in here okay then I'm going to go to new line put car backslash n so when I run this program It's going to actually print ABC. How does it print it? Like this. So essentially, it gets in. SDR becomes exactly as we mentioned. ABC and the rest of them are all no. Are we okay with this? Right. Go back to your drawing. Drawing. Yeah. It's all gone. <laughs> okay, but I can do a small one for you. Yeah. Yeah, backslash zero, null, zero, all the same. So what if inside your string you have zero and you want to print out that zero? That's zero. I'll, I'll show you what, I, I'll tell you exactly what it means. Two seconds, okay? Let's walk through this first, then I'm going to answer your question. Are we okay? I'm happy that you have that confusion, okay? So now, I'm at PR and SDR, so I'll go into the function. So SDR, the address of SDR will go away. So array will point where SDR pointing, which is the beginning of this array, right? Then I'll go in that one. Then it starts, then it prints array 0, which is A, right? Prints that one, then it prints array 1, which is B, then it prints array 2, which is C. Now it comes up, array I is C, right? When I++ plus plus happens, essentially, this goes to the next one, which means it becomes zero. Because zero not equal to zero is false, it breaks and comes out. Right? Now, you said, what if I want to print zero? Correct? Okay. Now I'm going to do something with this. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, uh, let me just... Let's stop that. printf percent what is the index of zero in here three three okay three so I'm gonna say printf percent D and percent D okay what is the index of null terminated character null terminating character it's four. four. This <laughs> okay. okay. So 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 let's let's analyze it and kind of focus on it. Okay. So essentially, this is index zero. So this will be index zero. This is one. This is two. This is three. And here is the null terminating character, which is. Four. This is that backslash zero thingy with two two things over here. Are we okay with this? All right. All right. So let me clear it. All right. So I'll go back. Now I'm going to point two percent. These one is going to be SDR three, which is B, right? And the other one's going to be SDR. 4, which is 0, right? And, and I'm going to go to new line. That's going to clear the confusion, hopefully. We're going to make you more confused. So when I run this beautiful program of mine, the output is going to be, three years later, that's the top one, and the other one is 48 and 0. So the ASCII code of shape of 0 is 48. But the 0 itself is no, it's 0. Okay, so if you want to print the shape of 0 as a character, you need to print the character with ASCII code 48. Well, if you want to end the data, you have to put the 0, integer 0. Are we okay now? 
Questions? Suggestions? Objections? So that's printing a string. We already know that printf has this one in its belly. Right? That PRNSDR that I have written, printf already has it. You put percent %s, printf does that for you. We know that, right? So you can actually, instead of that printing that print string thingy, ah, let it be, who cares? Okay. So just wanted to say that it's there. So I could have actually said, say something like, I could put percent %s in here, and I could print the SDR by itself. Right? Let's not call that print string. I'm just going to comment that for now. All right, so if I run this now, it's going to actually print the string and then 48 and then 0. Are you okay with this? Yes. Why do you print the ASCII code? Pardon me? Why do you print ASCII code? I mean, 48. What is this? Can you tell me? What is this? This is um, integer. What is this? Integer, right? So let's do it like this. Percent C. Tell me, what is the output of this program? I am printing SDR3. One with percent C, the other one is percent D. So first, it's going to be C, uh, C. Okay. And the second uh, will be. The second one is not C. Okay? <clears throat> now listen to me carefully. Percent C, you are telling to printf, print the shape, print the shape of a character whose code is 67. Okay? Was it 67 or 48? 48. No, 48 was 0. So let's go back. Because you said C. Bad boy you are. It's 0, not C. <laughs> Yeah, I'll put, uh, let's, let's put zero over here like this. And I'm going to remove that. Okay? All right? Now it's going to print A, correct? So you are saying, but here you are actually printing what is inside the array. Inside the array, it's an integer. At the beginning of the semester, we said characters are integers. Characters are integers. There are no characters in C language. We have no such thing. There is no such thing as a character type in C language. We do not have it. C can only hold an integer. But we have something in printf that we can tell printf, please Print the shape of that integer thingy, whatever it is. Now, if it's 65, it's going to print like this, which is an A. But if you say print the integer itself, then of course it's going to print its code, what's really inside the array. And how do we terminate the array? With something that co doesn't correspond with any shape. With a code that doesn't correspond with any shape, and that's what we call a null character. All right? Yes, sir. What if you fill the whole uh, uh, string variable with characters, like all ten? <laughs> like that's what you, you can't. Oh, then you're doomed. Sure. That's when you have segmentation for core dumped. You're gonna get that message. Can we try it? No, because I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna? I'm telling you. You say, see, I just mentioned that to have three characters as a string, you need a fourth one to make it null terminated. Yeah. So to keep three characters, you need four spaces. Yeah. You're saying, what if I have four spaces only? No, no. Then it's going to overflow. It's going to crash the program. Oh, okay. And you're going to do it anyways. I'm not going to, because you're going to see that. The boom is going to say, illegal operation happened, call the police. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Are we okay? So... All right, so that's the ASCII code, and all right, so this is going to be, yeah, so so I'm going to do str, and I put over here, and in here I'm going to say str3 ASCII, 
and this one's got to be uh, SDR4 ASCII. Are we okay with this? Shall we continue? All right. Let me just run it, make sure it runs. All right. Okay, so ABC0, string is that one, SDR3 is 48, SDR4 is 0, and that's why it's null termination. Okay? And A and 65, A is the shape, 65 is the. Questions down to here? All right. So I'm going to put, I'm gonna call this uh, 01SDR, string, dot C. Now the second thing. is this one. So I'm going to put, say, what, what, 21? 21. So how big of a string I can hold in that array SDR now? Uh, 20. Thank you. Beautiful. Love I that. I just had a question because I think for um, workshop 4 or milestone, one of them, mm -hmm. I Yeah, yeah, and if you did anything, it would have failed, yeah. I didn't know what that was for, so I just... Okay, beautiful. Goody, goody. So, now we have the SDR over here. Uh, so I'm going to call it SDR1. And I'm going to have an SDR2 in here. And that's going to be 21. I want to set SDR2 to ABC0 as that one. Okay? Let's change that one from ABC0 to something else. I'm going to put over here... Fred, you want hello? You want me to put hello? Sure. Okay. He doesn't like Fred, so I'm going to put hello. But hello is too long. I don't want to go through it. There's two more loops I just want to do. Okay, so Fred. Okay? Oh, I can say hola. <laughs> Bye. <coughs> Are we okay out here? So if I want to set SDR2 to Fred, 80% of you will do this. SDR2 is set to SDR1. Right? Because you want to set that array to this array. But you should remember, these are not variables. These are arrays. There is no single entity. You cannot use assignment. Assignment operator is for one single entity. You can set the whole structure to another. That is fine. But you cannot put 21 things into 21 other single assignment. You need 21 single assignment operators. That's why assignment operators don't work for arrays, specifically for strings. If I want to copy SDR1 to SDR2, I have to write a function and make that assignment thing happen 20 times if needed. So how do I write the function? Void SDR SDR copy and left side is going to be the pointer to the one that I'm going to copy into so I'm going to call it character pointer destination and the right one is going to the one, is the one that I'm copying from so I don't want to change it so I'm going to say const character pointer source if you don't like pointers you're scared of them you can put array potatoes potatoes it's the same thing no difference now in SDR copy what do I do I'll start from the beginning. I'm going to say, okay, integer i, 4, i set to 0, and stop when you get to null. I don't know how many. I have to keep going until I get to null. So I'm going to say source i being not equal to 0. So keep going as long as it's not 0, i++, plus plus, and then copy into the destination i what you have in source I. So this is wrong. Can't do. And I'm going to... Anyways. Uh, wrong. Uh, operator is only only for single variables. and not 
my hand and brain are not in sync. Single variables are not uh, uh, arrays. Okay? And that's wrong. Good. Okay. So, now what happens over here? Now think about it for a second. Let's, let's do this. So let's run that thing and see what happens. Uh, and to see if it works or not, I'm going to do this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. How many do we have there? Uh, I think that's, that's less than 21, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Anyway, so if, well, if what I have done, A, B, C, D should be replaced with Fred, correct? And let's make that all capital, correct? So I have written a string copy. So let's actually try it. So I'm going to say uh, uh, SDR copy into destination that is SDR2, the source that is SDR1, and I'm going to say, and I'm going to say printf. What's happening to me today? Sorry, something's wrong with my fingers today. Anyways, uh, so uh, percent. Uh, so I'm going to say SDR uh, one is percent S, and SDR two is percent S. And I'll go to new line. In here, I'm going to put SDR one and SDR two. So if everything is right, what's going to happen? I'm going to have two threads, all capital. Correct. And when I run this beautiful program of mine, this is what I'm going to get. Look. The first one is Fred. The second one is Freddy. Okay? Why? I did not now terminate the second one. I did not follow the standards of strings. String means when the data is over, mark it with a null. I did not do that. I went, I did copy. So when I was copying, I used the standard, but I did not enforce it afterwards, which means I said, stop when you get to the null. But what happens to the null after for the destination? So I have to, after I'm done with my copying, afterwards, say destination i is set to zero. Which means now the destination is told, now terminated. Now if I run this beautiful program of mine three years later, I'll see that I have Fred and Fred. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Are we okay? So, okay. <coughs> Many times when you are writing programs, you need to know what is the length of a string? You need to know how big the string is to do something, to see if you have to cut it short or something. For example, I want to point the names, and I, for, for calculation purposes, I put 51 characters for names. Some people have long, long names, right? But I only want to print the first 20. So I have to write an if statement. If the string is longer than 20, cut it short. I do the whole thing. How do I find out? I need to know what is the length of a string. For that, you have to write a function. There is no way for C language to know how long is a string. So I have to write a string that uh, a function that returns an integer. str let is the name, and I'm going to pass it a constant character pointer str. This time I'm going to put pointer, just to show you there's no difference. Okay? <coughs> so that a string, I need to find out what is its length. How do I find out? Integer i for i set to zero and str i and i plus plus. This time I'm not going to put not equal to zero because now we are all pros. We are all pros. Why? Because not equal to zero is the essence of the true in C language. If it is zero, it's false. I don't need to say not equal to zero. If you write something like this, in your code, when you are being hired, immediately they're going to say, oh, they'll heat this guy learned C yesterday. Okay, nobody writes that, because they know if it's zero, it's false. Why do you have to write it again? Okay, so, and 
When I don't put a body for a loop, what happens? Internally, it keeps looping until, I, until it hits the null. And when it hits the null, I is the length, hopefully. Correct? When it hits the null, it stops when it reaches to null, right? So in here, I'm going to say return I. So I can say printf str is percent d characters long. And in here, I'm going to put str len of str1, let's say. Okay, and if I run this beautiful program of mine, three years later, I'll see that str is, str1 is four characters long, sorry. str1 is four characters long. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, okay. <laughs> now, you have a first day. You have a last day. You want them, you want to put them in one array. One string. I want first name, I want full name. So I have first name, last name, I want to make full name. How can I do that? How can I do that? Yeah, we need a third array. But how do I put all these things together? Let's write a function for it. Let's call it concatenate. STR cat to concatenate, which means add one, or we can call it append. Okay? Or concatenate. So I'm going to say, I don't need to return anything. STR cat, I'm going to call it. So the destination at left <coughs> is the one that is going to hold the thing, right? Uh, uh, is going to have some value in it, something in it, and I want to concatenate what I had at right side to it. So it's going to be constant character pointer source. So <coughs> what I need to do over here is essentially this, not that, this. Um, what I need to do is essentially this. So I have this array, okay? So I have over here F, uh, R, E, D, sorry, okay? So that's F, R, E, D. Your face looks very bad. I mean, like this, like your face looks like, what the hell did he just write? Okay, sorry, I'll try to be. Oh, that's right, and he, he, he should have said, it was probably, he was like, what the? <laughs> Sorry, this, this thing is very uh, imprecise, so I'll try to be. <laughs> okay, all right, so what do I want to write? Let's make it some other color. So I'll try to be better, so that's F, R, E, D, and I have null here, right? So that's, that's Freud over here, right? And I want to, I want to, I want to attach, I want to, I want to put a soleil after. So if I want to add this, so uh, this is what I want to do. So first of all, I know that, I know that prototype of my function, of my function over there. Let me just, uh, where is the thing? Give me two seconds. Let me let me save this. Uh, uh, so that's uh, zero to str funks. All right. So now what I'm going to do? So I. What happened to the third one? My str cat. Oh. Okay. Just a second. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so this is what I want to do. So, <clears throat> uh, let's actually name it something. So I'm going to say over here, uh, first name. And in here I'm going to have last name. And I want to have full name. Now, 
Now, people, tell me, how long should be full name? Keep going, 45, 46, 47. 42. How big? 41. Thank you. 41. He's bored today. He's like, God, let me go. <laughs> 41. You need one turn of null terminated character. You have 20 over here, 20. 20 plus 20, 40. Add one null, 41. While you're adding up the nulls, you don't need the two nulls at the end. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are we okay? Are we okay? Are we okay? Are you okay? He's paying attention. Are you okay? Okay, so, so if I want to do that, I have to add S to where null is on Fred. Is that correct? What is the index of null over here? Index. Four, right? What is the length of Fred? Four. So remember, the length of a string is essentially the index of the null. Always. Right? Right? Beautiful. So, so what I can do over here, right? Okay. <coughs> so, what I need to do over here is this. I need to say int, say len is set to str len of destination. So, len will be, or, or I can say null index. Okay? Should I make it a COBOL name? Destination null index. So, destination null index, oh my goodness, that's a long name. So, the destination null index is strln of destination, right? So essentially I'm finding where the null is, correct? Right? Now I have to copy one by one into that. Right? So, I have two ways of doing it. I can go for, don't put anything in here, and say source. I'm going to write it in a bad way and a good way. So I'm going to have over here integer i. I'm going to say <coughs> for i set to 0 uh, and uh, source i, right? And i plus plus. So I'm going to go through whatever is in source, correct? And I'm going to put that one right after the destination null index, right? So in here I'm going to say what? I'm going to say... Uh, Destination Destination null index. That's why we have comments. Okay? So that DNI is destination null index. So I can say destination DNI right is set to source i. But as soon as I do this, I have to add one to this to go to the next one, right? So not only i has to be added by one, but the d and i have to be added by one too. So I keep going forward, correct? No? You're not following, are you? Are you okay? Okay, so let's, let's, let's walk through it. What's going to go in D and I having that data? D and I is going to be 4, correct? So essentially it's going to put the point to here. When for loop starts, I is 0. So is I 0 null? No, it's not. It's S, right? So it's going to, so it's going to come in. So it's going to say this, this 4 is source 0, which means this is going to be overwritten by S. Right? Then I will be added by 1, which means that's going to be the next character of source, but DNI stays over here. So I have to make DNI to go next one too, so I have to add 1 to this one too. Therefore, I'm going to go in my for loop and add one more. And in here I'm going to say DNI plus plus. You can do that. You can have many things, many uh, uh, expressions added over there. I know, DNI plus plus right over there. Is that what you want to say? Uh, wouldn't DNI plus I also work? Yes. Let's not 
complicates. It will work. Yeah. yeah. All right. He's right. He says, couldn't we just put over here D and I plus I? Then I had to explain that this I is going to go one, one. So like this, they see that they're both moving and life is beautiful. Like that, I have to add one more math thingy to it. So, so are we okay with the answer here? So D and I. <coughs> so if I have, if I have this as source. So source has soleil and an all over here, right? So this is I, that is zero. This is D and I, that is four, correct? So when we are here, right at this point, I is zero, that's fine. D and I is four, that's fine. So as a result, this S will be copied into oh whoa 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 This S is gonna get copied right into here, so this will be S. Right? Then I will be added by one, D and I will be added by one. I becomes one, D and I becomes five. Then source one will go to D and I destination 5, which means all will be copied into this one. Correct? And it keeps going until Y is here. And then when we get to the end, we have to now terminate the destination and life is beautiful. Alright? So I'm going to do that. So now, oops, it'd be easy. Just a second. E I need that. Okay, so now what I can do in here, after everything is done, I'll just say, Destination DNI is set to. Yeah, is set to zero. And in here I'm gonna put 41. Now, to actually have the full name, first I have to say SDR copy into full name. The first name. We know that it, that will work, so I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about it. Then I have to say SDR copy, SDR cat, into full name, last name, right? And then, let me fix that last name, that's capital, it's not supposed to be. Now I'm going to say printf, full name is, percent s and new line and I'm going to put over here full name okay and when I run this program I'm going to get Fred so as you see there is no spaces between them I can fix that it's easy how can I fix it I'm going to add a space right here I'm going to say SDR cat to full name a single space. That's a string, right? I can put a constant literal string over there. So it first concatenates the space, then it concatenates the, the rest. And if I run that, then I'm going to get a space between the two. Are we okay? Are we okay? But, <coughs> listen, reuse your code. I went through math and did all this loop schmoop over here. You didn't need to do that. You already had code enough to do this without writing any code. How? <coughs> With all the knowledge that you had from C down to this point, you should have been easily reusing your code. So let's comment that. First copy. Oopsie. First copy. Comment that. So I have a question. What is an array? Can anybody tell me what is an array? No, in, in, like you are in an interview and, and, you, and in an interview they say, how does C language implement an array? How does arrays work? What is an actual array in C language? It is a pointer 
pointing to the beginning of a pack of data. Right? 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 Are we okay? So we know that, right? So in here, all I need to do is this. I know where is the the index of the null terminating that I want to copy things into, correct? Essentially, oh, I have to draw again. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm uh, sorry. I apologize for everyone for this. But, wow, look at the green. It's exactly like that one. Anyway, so, 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 so what I meant was, what I meant was, I had over here, Fred and null, right? Correct? And I know exactly what the index of this is using SDR, uh, SDR len, correct? So, if I extract the address of that, if I can extract the address of that, I can fool SDRN to believing that this is an array. Correct? So, in here, I, ch I could simply say SDR copy into address of destination DNI, the source, and be done with it. Right? Why rewriting a string copy that I have done before when I have the function, use your knowledge. You know that ampersand extracts the address. You know address of a pack of data means array. Therefore, you can pass that address to SDR copy. SDR copy doesn't know the difference. SDR copy, when it receives that address, it thinks that destination begins here. So it's going to copy from here and now terminate it too. Ta-da! Mission accomplished. So I don't need to write that code. Always try to reuse your code to do all these beautiful stuff. Are we okay? You understand all these things? We didn't need to write any of these things. They're all in the string here. All these functions that you see, the little cute functions that I taught you, they are in string header file. So header files, standard header files that you have in C language, not necessarily are complicated things. There are things, so essentially, let me just <coughs> wipe this one up. <coughs> now, uh, so I'm going to put call this one 03 uh, funks. Let's see. Now take a look. Instead of doing all that, I could have done this. PR and SDR we don't have because it percent S is printing it. So I'm going to just wipe that out. SDR copy, SDR len, SDR cat. We don't need any of those. All you need to do is include string dot H. And they're all lowercase. So it's SDR copy, SDR cat, SDR cat. Works perfectly. All right? Are you okay with this? Are you okay? So if I run this, it works exactly the same way. No difference, it just use, uses string header file functions. Exactly the same way. All right? Now, string header file has many different uh, functions. One of the most important functions that we have in string header file is called uh, SDRCMP. SDRCMP compares two screens, strings, to see which one comes in first in dictionary. Okay? SDR compare essentially checks two things to see which one comes in first thing. So if I want to check, and how do I, how can I check that one? Um, how can I check that? I'm going to write a code first for that, and then I'm going to uh, do another thing that I wanted to do. So, uh, uh, I'm going to say, uh, SDR, co SDR compare returns an integer. Okay? And this is how it works. So, 
if you have two strings, okay? SDR, if SDR1 is greater than SDR2, okay? To accomplish such a thing, this doesn't exist in C language. You have to do this, SDR compare, SDR1, SDR2, greater than zero. So if this is true, if this is true, it means SDR1 comes in first in the dictionary. It's greater than the other one. Okay? If, to check to see if string 1 is equal to string 2, if they are identical, you write the exact same thing, but you compare it with 0. So if it returns 0, it means the two are the same. To check and see if SDR1 is smaller than SDR2, this has to be done that way. All right? That's exactly what it is. So to accomplish this, you call that function. All right? So I'm going to say if string compare first name <coughs> last name greater than zero printf percent s is percent percent s and in here I'm going to put first name and last name else <coughs> is what I wrote as a code for sample correct? By saying if string compare is greater than zero, then as we mentioned over here, first string is greater than text. So I'm printing that just as a message. Otherwise, less than. Is that correct? Is that correct? Is that correct? Or oh, there's a bug in there. There's a bug. It could be the same. Okay, so it's less than or equal. So to accomplish less than or equal, you have to say not that one. <laughs> okay? There is no not equal. So if I run this, you'll see that Fred is less than Saray. It means it comes first in the dictionary. It's smaller. It comes first. Yes? Yeah, A, B, C, D. A is smaller than B. Essentially, you know how string compare finds out which one is first, which one is second? It's ASCII code. So what happens is that, forget it. As I wanted to say how string compare works, I want to leave something for you. Go write string compare, as I did for the other ones. Write string compare, so it actually works that way. I'll give you some bonus marks. If you can explain to me how it works. Don't Google it, okay? Don't. Don't be, okay? Try to challenge yourself, okay? Don't go Google it and bring it to me. Uh, you have to explain it to me, okay? If you can do it, I'll give you, what? 5%? Yeah, uh, that sounds more That sounds more That sounds more Yeah, I think 10% is about right. 3% for the second assignment. <coughs> for assignment two. It's nothing? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can, you can sit at your home and think. Do something that's going to help you learn something. You had 3% for it. It's like I'm paying you to eat something. Anyways, <clears throat> so are we okay with that? Now, what is the major problem with strings that we have? What is the major problem with strings that we have? Major problem with string is that there is no way that through a program... I could decide what is the length of a string that I'm reading. And I can write an integer get int in range, 
so it gets an integer between certain values, right? But I cannot write a, a statement that receives a string, and I say the string should be only maximum of 20 characters long. You can't do that. I know in Scanf you can put a, I don't know, percent %25s, to only get 25, maximum of 25, but that's hard-coded. You cannot change it to a variable. You cannot make it change. Okay, so we're going to write a code now that does that. So I'm going to add it to my io.c. So we can write a, a function that receives a string up to certain amount of characters, and we'll learn exactly how it works. Go for a break and come back. And when you come back, please remind me to, to resume recording. So we mentioned that all the things that we have done, it's already in, in, in string header file, and we can use them all. And we mentioned that one of the problems of, of working with strings when you're doing data entry is that you cannot have a variable length using a function. So we, can, we want to change that. We want to have something like this. So I'm going to go to my io.c and h that we had, and in there, I want to add something like this. I want to have void get string. So to get a string, character pointer string. And I want to tell what is the length up to this length. So I'm going to call it max len. OK? Now, what I'm going to write is not the best way. It's not the good way, but it's the exact level of knowledge that we have, OK? If we knew dynamic memory allocation, we could have written, written a much better thing. But we don't know dynamic memory allocation, so we're going to do it other way. So this is what I want to write. I want to write a function that receives up to a uh, uh, certain length for me. Are we OK with this? We decided that we're going to do this later. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I'm not used to this ink to go thingy yet. Sorry about that. So, what I'm going to say to be continue. Oh, yeah. All right. So, how do we write a user interface? Okay. How do we write a user? What is the structure of a user interface? Um, a menu-driven user interface. First off, you need a menu. You've done that already. Okay. In my I/O, uh, what do I have in my I/O? Let's see. Um, I don't have a menu, but I want to see. I have get int, get limited, and that's fine. Okay. So, so first of all, you need a menu. And what I'm doing is universal. It's something that you do everywhere. Can somebody please close that? Thank you. First of all, you need a menu. That, that menu actually uh, uh, goes through options. So essentially, what do we do? Int menu. OK? And in that menu thingy, uh, I don't need to show anything. So in here, you're going to have your options displayed. Printf um, 1, um, option 1. I'm going to do only three options, but you can have 50,000 if you want to. OK? So 50,000 is a lie, but the amount that actually fits in a screen. So 2, 3, and 0, I'll put it for exit. 2. Three and option zero. I'm going to put exit. And in here, I'm going to say return get limited int. Do I have that over there? No, I don't. So let's add my IO. Include uh, my IO. That h get limited int. And the limited it will be between 0 and the maximum number that you have over there. 
So that gift, Amy Kennedy is going to correct it and tell you what the options are. So that's very simple, right? That shows the menu. No problem with this, right? <coughs> then for your menu system, there's always a switch statement. Switch statement is one out of many, and that craves for menu system. So first of all, you're going to have a general loop, and a general loop loops through the whole system, which means you're going to have a flag, int done set equals to zero. Done means I'm done. Then you're going to say while not done. Never go through the logic of your program to see how am I supposed to exit. That's confusing. Then you have to get involved with business logic when you are doing user interface. Your user interface must be an independent thing from your system. Therefore, in design this, later think of what you want to do. So done, whenever you set done to one, it's going to exit. Okay? So right at the end, we say, I don't know, print off, goodbye, goodbye, thanks for whatever, whatever, whatever you want to do. Okay? Let's just have that goodbye. Okay? Then, you show the menu and get the option. Two choices. Either create a, a, a variable called option and go through it, or just use your menu. Okay, so I'm going to say switch to the menu. Menu is going to return something, right? Menu is going to return an option, correct? And I do not need a default over there. Default is for values that I don't know what they are. My menu is intelligent. It won't let user choose anything stupid. So I don't need to detect stupidity in my switch statement. It's impossible for it not to have something. If you want to have a default statement over there, you should have something like this. Printf, I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so it will never happen. So this will never happen. I'm going to say this will never happen. So call the police. Okay. I don't know, because it's not going to happen. It's impossible. Okay? So, now that you're in here, you, you put your options. So you're going to say case, one, break, and put all the options that you have. Case two, and case three. In here, printf, do the, do option one. And do option two, do option three, and you're done. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the format, the thing you have to do for all <coughs> menu-driven interfaces, and there is no exception. Okay? Two and three. So essentially this is what happens. You're saying done is zero, while not done do this. And when you are putting exit, you're going to say case, zero, done is one. Break. And that's going to end everything. Now if in any circumstances in case one, two, or three, you need to quit the program, just set one to one, done to one. You don't need to think about, how am I supposed to break the loop? You don't need to, because you have a flag for it. And that's done. This works for all menu-driven systems. And there is no exceptions about it. All right, I have what I wanted to say over here. Something <coughs> like... Uh, I don't even know how, like, you, have, you should do some very, very bad things for this thing to happen. Like, like, 
something that creates some segmentation fault and, and something that overwrites your memory so the value of uh, the value that switch is generating the menu is getting is changing to something other than zero to three. Okay, so this will never happen, seriously. Okay. Uh, so chances of winning the dodo ticket is much more than this. Okay. All right. So um, now you know what's going to be funny. I run it and that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. For you. Um, <coughs> let me see if there's anything else to add. <laughs> Do I have a pause in this thing? In my I.O.? No. That's the easiest thing. And you can always say printf. Press enter to continue. All right. Uh, since you like dots, all right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I thought. Anyway, so now if I run this, so now now you can now you don't have to add a pause after every single one. You just just go after the switch and over here do a pause, and it applies to all of them. Okay. As soon as everything something's finished, it pauses. So now if I run this program, it's going to be a menu system that that essentially works like if I put over here seven, so out of range, that's the value. So it tells you what it is. That's get int working. Okay, now I'm going to say 2. It's going to say option 2. Press enter to continue. Uh, now again, it shows the menu. So this is, uh, I mean, you put 0, and then it goes out. Goodbye. Okay? Would you... Yes, I would. No, would you want it to be pressed? Before goodbye? Before goodbye. Uh, probably no. If that's the case, then you have to put it for every individual one. Uh, or, or <coughs> yeah, you have to put it. Or, or, or put an if statement, if not done. Okay? Right? If it's not done, pause. If it's done, done. Okay? Yeah, sure, sure. So if now if I go zero, it's going to say goodbye. Okay. So it's very simple. And it works with any menu system that you have, anything you want to do. Now remember, one important thing. You can have menu systems within menu system. So when you say, so for more options, click. So if that's the case, don't write another switch in here. Create a function for that thing. That becomes a separate program of its own. Okay, don't clutter your stuff. If you are supposed to have another menu in case three, then write this up, make that one a separate thing and do it later. Never ever, imp your main should never grow, grow bigger than this, ever. For those people who have extra functions, they wrote their own functions for, uh, for, the, for the assignment, you have to have those things either in helper or contact. You are not allowed to add anything to main. You see at the top of main it says do not modify this thing. Okay? So if you have any functions of your own that you have written. Yeah, no, no. Uh, <coughs> for mine in the Xcode, whenever I compile my thing, apparently there's an in pause void. Uh, and so I had to make mine capital P so, so it could run. Yeah, it sounds really messed up and weird. No, no, it's not messed up and weird. Mac is Linux, it's a real operating system. Windows is not case sensitive. So. Is that you're checking for P, capital P or not? Uh, no, on Xcode, like on Xcode. Oh, there's a function called pause? Yeah, there's an in, there's an in void pause in, in Xcode, apparently, in one of the header files. So it would crash my system, and then I'll make, I have to make it so it's like... C language doesn't have a pause? Xcode has pause in its C? Apparently, an in void pause. Wow. In, in start visual studio, it comes from Mac too. <laughs> it does. I think there's a, I think I went on a website and it was the Visual Studio on for Mac, I think. 
I think I'm using it, but it doesn't let me do C programs. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because why, because X. Doesn't use an X code. Okay, got it. Oh, I don't know. I've never I've never used it, so I don't know. Doesn't use an X code. Anyway, so actually yeah. went much quicker. I can actually do the other one too. So are we okay with this thing? Do we understand how many systems work? Yes. Very simple now. Okay. <coughs> So in here, um, uh, what's the time? Yeah. Okay. So to compile this, you have to go GCC my io dot c and uh, uh, what is this? What is this? Uh, this is zero five and zero five menu dot c. Okay, so now let's save it. Zero five menu. Let's see. Now the other thing that we have written stopped. Uh, was it string dot h? Yeah. So. For this mile, that I, what I wanted to add this. Now, take a look. Remember that when we did file stuff, I told you that files are actually uh, like standard input and output of keyboard and string, and they're actually files. There is a function called fgets. So this is how it looks like. fgets. And you see it has a buffer. It means where to write it. What is the maximum number of counts that it wants to get, and from which file? Okay, so if, if you do something like this, you can actually use the string for it. So you can actually say from standard input and maximum count of the things that you want to get is max len. Oh, sorry, uh, into string. Max len file string is standard input. So, very simple actually. There you go. So, <clears throat> that's it. Simple and straightforward. It's just a function called to have get s. So, if you do that, essentially it uh, uh, goes off the maximum uh, characters, puts it in a string, and it gets it from standard input. As simple as that. Okay, and the good thing is that with this, you can actually limit the number of things that you get. So that's a good thing, I think. All right? Um, to write this thing manually, to actually write it yourself, is a very difficult thing. You cannot do a get string by yourself. You essentially have to write a text editor. So don't even think about it. <laughs> okay? Because you literally have to write a text editor. Literally. And... Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. Try it. You have a backslash B, right? So you can actually, you can kind of do it. Yeah, backslash B goes backwards, right? So you can actually, maybe you can do it, but I don't know. It's it's a very difficult thing to do. As it, if you do that, I give you ten percent for the for the first test, for the for the for the um, for the second assignment. <laughs> if I do, if you man, if you write a get string of your own. Okay. Uh, actually, it, quit, it, it finished much, much, much quicker than I thought. Um, any questions? No, I think I'm good. You just need to switch case. That's all I really All right. All right. So, save these and uh, stop the recording. <laughs>